let's continue uh, in this eighth part of JavaScript. Now we go into things that are the source of many errors in JavaScript. Um, so it's really important to understand them. And part, part of that is really why JavaScript has such a bad reputation, because it does have the reputation that, that it does things that are not intuitive, not logical, um, but it helps to simply try to understand the concepts that I'll discuss. Uh, and that way you, you understand a bit more what JavaScript actually does in the background. And mainly these relate to type conversion, uh, so conversion between uh, variable types, comparators, so how to compare one value to another, uh, the scope within JavaScript that is a bit different from many programming languages, um, and a concept that is called hoisting in JavaScript. And we'll go through them on the next six slides. So JavaScript, as I've discussed, has four different primitive types and two complex types, um, and it changes them. So as you see in this example, we have set test is of type string, and on the next line we assign two numbers to it, x plus y, so the result is 11, uh, and the type changes. So it changes from string to number. This is also something I've already demonstrated in the, uh, in the previous recording. Um, but it does something else, and that's figuring out how the conversion works. Because if we take the example x plus y, those are two numbers, uh, what happens if we add a string to that? So one thing I've discussed, types are dynamic, they can change. Um, but what I'm now discussing is how to convert those things. And well, type of m, the resulting thing here is string. And this is, I take a number, add a number, add a string, the result is string. And the way JavaScript does this is it goes from the left to the right. So it starts by saying x plus y, it's two numbers. So it does a regular mathematical uh, addition, which means five plus six is 11. The resulting type of 11 is number. So that's exactly what I had up here. Set would be 11 of type number. But now I have 11 plus some text, a string. Um, and what JavaScript does then is that it actually converts my number, my 11, to a string uh, and it adds the five. And a plus for string is concatenation, so it adds the string to the end of the other string, meaning the result is 115. And this is uh, highly unintuitive, I would say, because five plus six is still a mathematical addition, but then 11 plus five becomes a string concatenation. So 11 has a five added to the end of it. So I use two different um, kinds of uh, additions in a way, two different kinds of operators, but I do not get an error here. Uh, and the other thing is, of course, if this would be mathematical, you could turn the, the operands around, so text plus x plus y should be the same result, and this is, of course, not the case in JavaScript. Uh, so if I would turn this around, if I would move text to the beginning, uh, I would have a string plus a number, so it would do the same thing it did before, it would convert my number to a string, and it would do five and add five to the end of it. So text plus X would be 55 as a string. And then I would get 55 plus six. Again, it would convert my six to a string uh, and add it to the back. So the result, if I move the text to the front would actually be five, five, six as a string. Uh, let's show this to t show you that I'm not lying. Uh, we use the same variables and the same values so that you don't get too confused. So I have a variable x, a variable y, and I have a variable text, uh, which has a string. And if I now say m is x plus y plus text, and I log this, uh, then you will see that m is 115. and of type string. Uh, and if we do the same the other way around, so if I, as I said earlier, if I say text plus x plus y, you get a different result for the value, not for the string. Uh, so 115 of type string or 556 of type string. Uh, the only change is that I move the text 
to the front of the addition. So here, the mathematical rules do not count. I cannot just switch the operands around, but JavaScript does different things. And that has to do with this conversion from left to right that I actually start here and so on. Now, comparison is similarly interesting. Uh, what happens if I have two variables that have that seem to be similar? I have a five as a number and I have a five as a string. What happens if I compare them? So you use the double equals as in other programming languages. Would the result be true or false? And by intuition, you would probably say this should be false because they are, after all, different. What actually happens is that this is true. Because similar to the addition uh, before, JavaScript looks at the two operands and realizes they are of different type. So the first thing it does is it converts the type. Uh, and it does it in the same way as before. It takes the number, converts it to a string, meaning suddenly x has string 5 and y has also string 5. And the result is, of course, that they are equal. Uh, so the equals only compares the value and it perf performs a type conversion before. Um, and this is, again, something that most people would not expect. Um, as in other languages, you have the inequality operator as well, the exclamation mark equals, and it does the same thing. It would first convert the, uh, the type, then compare the value. Uh, if you want to compare both, you would use the triple equals that exists in JavaScript. Uh, and this then does the type comparison as well. So here, what happens is that first JavaScript looks at are they the same type? If they are not, then it's automatically false. Uh, if they are of the same type, then uh, it compares the value. Um, so in a way, this is similar to writing, uh, to comparing two variables and their type. So you could, you can imagine that triple equals uh, is more or less the same as saying if type of x equals type of y and x equals y. So this is more or less the same as the triple equals. It compares both types, then it does a value comparison. This is important to note, uh, and a typical recommendation in this context is use the triple equals. Uh, because, as I said, this can be a, an, a source of error, uh, that you are not aware of, of this problem and you simply compare things the way that you don't want to compare. Uh, so use the triple equals unless you really absolutely need the double equals. And typically you do not, because you can also do the type, compare, the type conversion yourself if you do not want to compare the type. Um, but this way, if someone reads your code and sees the triple equals, he or she knows that there won't be any misunderstandings with type and value comparison. So it's good to do that. Uh, another source of errors or misunderstandings in JavaScript is the scope. Um, a lot of other programming languages have the block scope. So basically, if I have something in an if statement, it means that the variable is only valid within here, it's local. Uh, in JavaScript, this does not work quite the same way. JavaScript only knows global and local scope, nothing else. Um, from ES6, this is different. We'll get there in a second. Uh, but if we look at the following here, here we define a variable just in our script. Um, and this means this variable is global. I have access to that variable everywhere. I can access it here. I can access it in the function, I can access it in my if, and so on. Um, here I have a function, and if I define something in my function, it's local to the function. That's the local or function scope. Uh, so license plate, I cannot access outside of the function, not down here or in the if. Um, However, as I said, the regular block scope does not exist. So if I define var temp down here, I can actually access it outside of the if. So it's accessible after I'm, I have declared it, uh, and actually also before, and that's something we'll, we'll get to later. But this is not a local variable in my if statement, which is in contrast to many other programming languages. So this is global scope. Um, this is function scope, only valid in the function. Uh, 
Here we have a, a global scope as well, so the if block does not count. Um, and actually we have a fourth thing here, which I'll come to later. This variable here also has a global scope, and this is more a source of error than a, a, a misunderstanding, but I'll discuss that a bit later. Uh, let's have a look at this first. So, if I define a global variable x, uh, my glob has a value 5. Um, you can see that I can log this in different areas. Uh, I can have Within an if statement here, I just write true, so it, it gets executed in any case. You'll see that it works here. And also if I have a function, my func, then also within there, I can access this variable. Uh, this should not surprise you because this is the same. It works everywhere. Uh, now it only gets printed twice because I never execute my function. So let's change that. And now we have three outputs. So these are global variables similar to other programming languages. Um, if I move my variable into the if statement, um, you will see that, of course, it's accessible in the if statement, but it's also accessible outside of the if statement, and it's also accessible in my function. So again, I should get three fives. Same here. Uh, so it's basically not becoming local just by these things. However, if I move this to my function, um, and I try to log it outside, then this will not work. Uh, this output will still work because it's of course within the function, but here I don't have access to the variable that's in my function scope. So you see five, that's the output from my function, but then it reference errors. It tells me my glob is not defined. Uh, so this variable has uh, local function scope. Now, one thing I mentioned was uh, this little problem here. I write x, x equals 6, uh, and note that I don't have the var statement here. I just do x is 6. Um, and now I try to access this. I can, of course, log it here, um, and I can also log it afterwards and we'll see what happens. And now you see that I have two outputs. I have this output, but I also have this output. Uh, and remember before when I tried to print my glob, it said reference error. Here it does not say that. Uh, just to show you, if I add var, then suddenly I get my error again. And this is called an implicit global, um, which is a bit dangerous. It's again a source of error. The reason is I've forgotten my var statement. Uh, and what JavaScript does, it, it adds it implicitly. And it doesn't add it here, but it implicitly adds it as a global variable. So it's similar to writing var x and then accessing it in the function. Um, so this is something JavaScript does by default. Um, and this, of course, can lead to errors again, because suddenly I have a variable that is accessible outside my function, even though I did not want that. Um, there are several tools that check for this, that this does not happen. Um, one thing is the strict mode, which we'll get to later. Um, but note that typically these implicit global variables are not intended, so you should not do this on purpose. Now I mentioned that ES6 has block scope, um, and a block generally in JavaScript is everything that has curly braces around. So a function is a block, an if statement is a block, a uh, loop is a block, and so on. Uh, and ES6 introduced two keywords that uh, allow you to declare variables uh, that have only block scope. So remember the var, if I do this, then I can access my variable temp outside of the if, but I can also use a let or const, and then suddenly I cannot access them. So suddenly they are local within my if. Uh, so if you look, if I lock these three variables, the first one will work without problem because this one is a global variable, but the other two are having block scope. So this will lock undefined. Um, and the difference between let and const is simply that let is similar to var, it defines a variable, whereas const defines a variable that you cannot redefine, reassign. So it's 
it's in a way like a constant. Let's show this again. Um, I'll just copy this code. And of course this should maybe be true, so it's executed in this context. Um, so I have my three variables. And then I lock them. And you'll see that it locks 42. That's the variable of this. Let, let's change the values that you actually see which one comes out. Um, and I'm sorry, but of course it does not log undefined for temp2, but it actually reference errors because it doesn't have a reference to it. So that's a mistake in the slides. Um, it does not have access to it. It does not know what temp2 is. So it gives you a reference error. If I remove this output, it will reference error here instead. So now we get temp3 is not defined. Um, and to show you what const does, if I try to change this, it should also not allow this, or it should not work rather. JavaScript allows most things, so you see it's not an error, but it will tell me type error. I cannot assign something to a const. So this is what those new two keywords mean. Um, so they, they're quite good. Uh, you can avoid a lot of the problems with global variables. There are different styles of doing that. But uh, if you use let and const, you don't have to think so much about it. So you automatically know, okay, it's only valid within here. So it's uh, it's a good new addition in ES6. Uh, and the final concept I'll discuss that is uh, a source of errors is hoisting. And consider the following output here. Um, I start by logging x. And now I have not anywhere defined x yet, right? You see down here is my definition, uh, var x. Uh, if I would skip this statement, then you still have the x is five. And as I've just shown you, this would make a global variable. Uh, but anyway, at this point in time, there is no definition of x. So this again should give me a reference error because x does not exist. Uh, now, as you've seen, if I do x equals five, this will work and it will, create a new global variable. Um, so the second log statement should give me five. Um, now the question is what happens here? Because I've already implicitly created x here. What if I create it again? Uh, and then the rest should probably work. So in any case, the variable exists at this point. I can assign seven to it. I can log it. Let's try this. And you already, of course, here in the slides, see what will come. Um, now, the interesting thing is it works. I don't get any error. Um, and it logs, maybe not completely intuitive, but at least understandable. Uh, the first log gives me undefined. So it does not give me a reference error. It just tells me, well, x has not yet been defined. But it knows what x is. Um, now... The second one logs five. I've assigned five, it logs five. Uh, it does not complain about my var x here. And it doesn't matter that there is an if statement around it. I can remove it, it will do the same. Um, so it does not complain about this statement. It adds uh, seven to it, it logs seven. Uh, so undefined five, seven, instead of reference error and then maybe some other behavior. So this is what the output is. Uh, and the reason is hoisting. Uh, so hoisting means that JavaScript takes variable declarations. So whenever I say var x, and it moves them to the top of the scope. Um, in this case, we are in the global scope. So it moves it all the way up. Uh, so if we look at this, this is my code. Uh, and what hoisting does, let's add my if statement just to have it the same as on the slides. Um, what hoisting does it, it takes the declarations var x and moves them to the top. So this is what hoisting does. Uh, and now it doesn't look so bad, right? The if statement doesn't do anything, okay. But I have my declaration. I can of course print this. It, I haven't assigned any value, so it's undefined. Then I assign five, I print five, I assign seven, I print seven. So this explains the behavior. 
Um, and this is what hoisting is. It takes declarations and moves them to the top. Um, if I have an assignment, a direct declaration with assignment, so if I do seven here, um, it does not take the entire thing and move it up there. It only takes the declaration. Uh, so again, we can print this and the result is still undefined, 5.7. Uh, so what, what it does is it takes only the declaration, hoists it, and here it changes it to x equals to 7. Uh, so this is the meaning of it. Um, this is called hoisting, uh, very confusing to a lot of people, and especially if you com uh, combine this with, uh, with the lack of block scope. So you see here my variable is within the block, uh, still this is a global declaration, so it's moved to the very top. Uh, if I have the same in a function, so let's say I have, I have some code here, it doesn't matter, uh, lots of JavaScript. At some point I have a function test, uh, and now I have all of this code in here. Uh, hoisting moves it to the top of the scope. In this case, we're in the function, so we have function scope. Uh, so var x is not moved up here, but it's moved to the top of the function. So this is the result of hoisting. Uh, and this happens at runtime, so you don't see it, uh, but be assured that it happens, and you have seen the output, so it somehow indicates that this is exactly what happens. Uh, so this is hoisting, important to know. Uh, now one last thing that I would mention here is the strict mode. The strict mode is something that was introduced in ES5 that forces a number of things. It basically causes the browser to give you errors uh, in case you do certain things, uh, and that's mainly meant to avoid errors, of course. Uh, and one, two of the things we have not used here, so for example, deleting variables is not allowed, which otherwise is. Uh, you can otherwise use keywords as variable names, which is strange, but one thing we have seen are the implicit global variables. If you use the strict mode, this will give you an error. Um, so if we do as we did before, I have a function test. In there I want to have a variable, but I forget my five. Uh, and you remember I can do console log x and this will work without problems. Um, This is how it was before, five. I can print my variable x even though I'm not in the function. Uh, and as I said, this is an error usually. Now if I use the strict mode, I just add a string at the very top saying use strict. Uh, and now what happens is the browser complains. So the browser now says, I'm trying to assign a value to x, but you have not declared x. So this is an error. Um, so the strict mode can help with, with realizing that you have these mistakes. Uh, one important thing is that hoisting still works. Uh, so this is not a problem. If I say x is five, and then only declare x afterwards, remember that JavaScript moves x to the top, um, and this is still fine in strict mode. So hoisting still works. This does not give me any problems, uh, even though the declaration is after the assignment. Okay, and this concludes the bit more advanced concepts. Now the next thing I'll look into is callbacks.